Welcome back to Learning to Code with Python, Lesson 6. Today we'll be talking about functions. Okay, to get started I've got a small program here that will draw a square using the loop we learned before. If you need to pause the video to catch up, go ahead and do that now. Alright, let's run the program so we're all sure we're on the same page. But before I do that, I'm going to move the Python shell window down here to the corner. We only really need this window now to tell us if we have an error. Otherwise, it's just in the way. So I'm going to put it there and leave us plenty of room for our program. So let's go ahead and run it. Good, it's drawing a square. But what if we want to draw more than one square? Well, we could tell the turtle to move some distance and then repeat this loop, draw the square again. All right? If we run that, you'll see now we are moving and drawing a second square. But what if we wanted to draw a lot of squares? It would be kind of a pain to have to copy and paste this loop over and over again. Wouldn't it be nice if we could just have a command called square? And then anytime we wanted to draw a square, we could just give that command? Well, we can by making something called a function. You can think of a function as a way to define your own commands that you can use anytime you want. So let's get rid of these loops. And let's define our square function. We start by saying def, which is short for define. And then what we want our function to be named. Well, let's just name it square. That makes sense, right? And remember, we're defining a command, and commands always have the parentheses. And then we have a colon, and now we're going to type what the definition of the square should be. Well, we know what the definition of the square should be, right? It should be a loop. Right? So that would be the definition of a square. Now if we run this program, you'll notice that nothing happens. Why is that? Well, we defined what square should be, but we never told the computer to actually draw a square. We just gave it the definition. So now that we've defined our command, we can use our command. So we can say square. And then we could have Fred move some distance and draw another square. But there's another problem with our square command. Every square that we draw is the same size. What if I want to draw squares that are bigger or smaller? I'd like the square command to work like this, where I put a number inside the parentheses and that's how big the square would be. So how do I do that? Well, in our definition of the square, we need to add to the definition that something will be inside the parentheses. And that something will be some number for the size. So let's call it size. So now whenever we give the square command, the number that we put in the parentheses will be inserted here and called size. And now, instead of going always going forward 100, we should go forward size. Let's see what that looks like. A square that's 100 and a square that's 150. So now our square command is finished. We can draw a square any size we want, anywhere we want. So let's do something fun. Let's draw squares all over the screen. So instead of just drawing these two squares, I want to draw a whole bunch of them. So let's make a loop. And let's actually count to 100 this time. Before we go any further, let's talk about coordinates. You've probably seen this in math class. But even if you haven't, don't worry, it's not too complicated. If you imagine that this big rectangle is the turtle window, and here's the turtle here in the center, then every spot on the screen where the turtle can be 
can be described by two numbers called its coordinates. The first number, which is called x, is where the turtle is horizontally, to the left or right. As that x number gets bigger, the turtle moves to the right. As that x number gets smaller, the turtle moves to the left. And the second number, which we call y, describes the vertical or up and down position of the turtle. And y gets bigger as the turtle goes up the screen, and y gets smaller as the turtle goes down the screen. So knowing that, we can tell the turtle to go to any spot on the screen by giving it those two numbers of where we want it to be. For example, if we wanted it to go to 100 comma 50, that would be 100 pixels over this way and 50 pixels up, and the turtle would wind up somewhere over here. Okay, so to make our random squares that we want to have anywhere all over the screen, we need to pick two numbers, tell the turtle to go there, and then draw the square in that spot. In order to pick those two numbers for where we want the turtle to go, we want them to be random, so we're going to need to learn some new commands. First thing we'll do is up at the top of our program, we're going to also import random. This tells the computer that we need access to the random commands. And now let's pick a number for the x. The command for picking a random number is random.randrange. And then inside of the parentheses of rand range, you put two numbers, the start and the end, for the two numbers you want to pick a random number between. So let's put minus 200 to 200. So that way in our turtle window, it'll pick something to the left or to the right. And then we need to do the same thing for y. Okay, so now we have a random number for x and a random number for y. And now we'd like to tell the turtle to go to that coordinate. The command to tell the turtle to move to a certain coordinate is go to and then you just tell it the x and the y. So we'll say go to that random x and y that we picked. And when you get there, draw a square. And let's just put 100 for the size of the square right now. Now when we run this program, the computer's gonna count to 100 and loop around and do these four commands 100 times. Pick a random x, pick a random y, go to that spot and draw a square. Let's see what happens. Ah, we have a problem. Every time we say go to, the turtle's still leaving a trail behind it. We probably want to pick the pin up in between each square, don't we? We're also moving kind of slow, so the squares are going to take a long time to draw. So I'm going to go ahead and close it. So let's add a command up at the top to set the speed to something fast. Remember, zero is the fastest. It means move instantly without animating. And then before we go to, we need to tell Fred to pick the pen up so that it's no longer touching the paper. And then we better remember to put it back down again before we draw the square. That's better. Let's see what happens now. Much better. That's exactly what I wanted to happen. And there it's done, 100 squares. Now let's make one more change. I'd like it if the squares were all different sizes. So instead of every square being 100, Let's pick a random number for that too. Now there's two ways we could do this. We could pick a random number and let's call it size. We'll just make a variable called size and we'll put random.randrange and let's make the squares anywhere between 10 and 200 in size. And then when we draw the square, we'll just use that size. Let's see how that goes.
now we have squares that are all different sizes. Now the other way we could do it is instead of picking this random number, putting it in a variable, and then using that variable for square, we could skip a step and just put that random.randrange command inside the parentheses of square. So it would look like that. So we're saying make a square, and inside the parentheses of square we're saying pick a random number between 10 and 200. You can do it either way. Both will work the same, and it really depends on which one is easier for you to read and understand. See, it works exactly the same. But I will point out, it's easy to make a mistake, especially when you're first starting out, when you do it this way. And the reason is that a lot of beginners tend to forget to count their parentheses. There always need to be the same number of left and right parentheses. And it may look odd to you to see two parentheses at the end here, but that's because they're separate pairs. These two parentheses go with random.randrange, and these two parentheses go with the square command. I see a lot of students typing this and then wondering why they're getting an error in their program. And it's because they left off that last parentheses. So this parentheses has no match. OK, let's add one more thing to this program before we're done. We have the squares going in a random location, and we have the squares being a random size. But let's also change the colors, too. It'd be nice if every square was a different color. Well, we can't pick a random number for color. But we can do this. At the top of our program, we can make a variable called color list. And this will just be a list of different colors. And you can use as many as you like. I'll put a few in here. Okay. Remember how lists work. They have square brackets on the end, and each item inside the list is separated by a comma. So now we have a variable called color list that's just a list of different colors. So before we draw the square each time, we want to pick a random color and tell Fred to change his color to that. Well, instead of using the random.randrange command, we're going to use a different one. So let's make a variable called tall, which is short for color. And we're going to pick a random color out of that list. The command is random.choice color list. The random.choice command says, inside the parentheses, tell me a list, and I'll pick a random one out of it. So now this variable is equal to one of these colors, red, blue, whatever. Now we can tell Fred to set his color to that, fred.color, and that should do it. Let's try it out. All right, let's stop there. Go ahead and experiment with this. Try changing some of the things around. Instead of a square, try defining your own shapes, like the star that we made before. And I'll see you next time.